Yeah, hi, welcome. Um, yeah, I'm Liz, as I said, and um, the title was also already mentioned. Why do I want to talk with you about uh, user events? Because it's very basic and it should be documented, right? Uh, that is uh, certainly the case, um, but what I was wondering when I uh, gave the um, well, idea to, to pro uh, for, for the proposal for this talk uh, was to get actually a state of where we currently are, because it has a little bit of background. Um, we had an evolution of different event systems. Nextcloud started from very early on with the hooks and went over the um, yeah, emitter approach. And yeah, eventually, eventually uh, arrived at the event departure with the typed events. Um, so that has some. I mean, um, yeah, the, the old approaches were that so had some issues, of course. Um, so that we kind of changed it over time. I think the last step was also due to an upgrade of the component from from Symphony. But it also means that we had to. Yeah, uh, migrate um, the old events. Some may still be there, and uh, there are also still some code for for um, yeah backwards compatibility. Um, but yeah, I wanted to see first whether all the user events actually are there, and um, then there's another uh, thing because we have different user backends. So we have the local ones like the database, which is built in, or the guests app, which is also local backend. Um, you can source uh, user source from other places, like um, from LDAP or via SAML or OpenID. Um, and some remote backends can be also written to, so there's a plugin to also write back to LDAP. So that makes it maybe a little bit um, more more complicated. Um, that's why, uh, yeah, I looked onto this as well, and here you see the cycle. It is not a cycle, but an arc, really. And um, yeah, we will now step forward through the uh, yeah event types here. So provisioning events, um, we have them when the user is created, and uh, the events typically come always in tuples. So you see there in the brackets the before. So usually there's an event that is being emitted before something happens, um, and then after the uh, yeah action is actually completed, then there's an um, event like user created event that is also being emitted. Um, now you see already here um, that only a few of these backends uh, I noted down behind this event uh, because that's also what I figured out. That uh, some do not, uh, some backends do not really um, emit this, and the background here is that that we have in the yeah abstraction um, there's a method to, to create a user, but this really has only effect on those that actually write it somewhere, so like in the database or the guest because they write on the local table, um, and the well up write support it's also uh, yeah sends this upstream into the LDAP repository, um, but others, they perhaps do not uh, listen to this. And uh, then the second one, the user added one, this is group specific, so it's, uh, if it's uh, added to a group, this has, uh, of course, only um, relevance to yeah, the group backends here. And the LDAP backend this time also uh, emits this, so maybe this is a little bit confusing. And maybe this is also that we have to, to address at some point. Um, the bottom one, this is rather um, an, an edge case where a user ID is accessed. So in this case, there's not supposed to be a heavy um, yeah, user creation um, yeah, logic to, to be executed, uh, only maybe some, uh, some logic that updates um, uh, database is basically about the available user IDs or so. Uh, but in most cases, you will uh, yeah, not, not want to listen to this um, because it's really an edge case here. Um, then the activity events, it's mostly about yeah, logging in, logging out. Uh, the login with cookie event is agnostic because, well, the cookie is sent from the browser and uh, no other backend is being. Um, 
they are pulled in here because it simply goes via via Nextcloud logic. Uh, but the user locked in event, uh, this is also again um, dependent a bit on, on the logic of the backend. And it also yeah, emits it properly and announces it. And yeah, uh, logout is again agnostic because you also have uh, some core functionality that needs to be executed to properly log out the user. Uh, we see then an old type event here on the bottom. That's a generic event for the first login. Uh, I think that we can also migrate at some point into this user login event um, because yeah, one of the you know, the difference between the generic events is that it takes an OPEX structure of yeah, some metadata, but this is, yeah, you need to kind of uh, know the internals about this, so there's, it, it's not in the ex exposed at some point. Um, but the user logged in event is our classes that are then sent around and um, they are in the OCP namespace, so in our PHP API and the UC, yeah, which data is being provided there, user ID, login name, etc. And then we could also add the uh, a bool value whether it's a first login or not. Uh, the modification events are ex uh, emitted for five types. It's uh, when the display name changes, when the email address changes, the avatar, um, the quota of a user, and the enabled state. And um, this is uh, basically agnostic, uh, but it goes via the user component from, from core. And this is a little bit tricky when for, uh, with those backends that actually then write or not write uh, to, to remote, because um, then you could run, run in a circle. So there are some tricks for the backends to do to announce this properly, but uh, yeah, if you just want to listen to it and react to it, then it uh, doesn't need to interest you too much. And there is a special event here when the password was changed. This is an also uh, emitted. Uh, eventually, when a user is being removed, it has um, well events as well, obviously. Oh, there was much. Um, these are agnostic also uh, to some degree because they need to be then removed from yeah, all the internal databases. Um, but what we also can only do is to clean up the data that we Nextcloud core on files on the server know about. So that is about the central um, tables and the file system. But if your app has your own tables where you have user data, um, with the user ID, then you need to clean up after them yourselves. So I think that's the uh, most important part, actually, that uh, yeah, when a user is deleted, that also the data is cleaned up so that a possible future user does not uh, get old data. Right. And yeah, eventually use cases, so it's all about housekeeping, basically, maybe initializing some tasks, background tasks, yeah, perhaps also about integration when you uh, try to reach out to other servers, mail server, for the mail app, for instance, they do this. Um, yeah, uh, these are the typical points where you want to listen to it to establish some tasks or remove them even. Um, yeah, sometimes it takes it's basically a repetition of what I uh, said uh, before. Um, and uh, then the eventually the final slide is how you can register a listener that should be in the documentation. It's uh, straightforward. In your application PHP, you have uh, the register method. Um, you can just edit. You provide the class names from the event and from your listener. And on the bottom here, you see your uh, yeah, own implementation. So where the three dots are is your uh, logic, basically what you want to do, and yeah, this is a simple structure of an handler. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for your talk, Liz.